Now, an excerpt from Shakespeare's Venus and Adonis. Long may they kiss each other for this cure. Oh, never let their crimson liveries wear. And as they last, their verdure still endure to drive infection from the dangerous year. That the stargazers, having writ on death, may say, the plague is banished. Hello and welcome. No Art School, Episode 9. Currently, I am sitting and watching the rain inside. My plants are listening to some classical music. Um, I'll try and edit any of that out. And I'm here. I'm back. I had a very long interlude between episodes, but a lot has come up for me um, in the most wonderful way. I have started again with a somewhat regular yoga practice. And I say somewhat because I did one of these 30 days of yoga on YouTube and it was awesome. Um, I started out that 30 days of yoga and staggered the lessons. Like it was not a consistent 30 days, but I think during the last eight to 10, I was really kind of like feeling it and, excited to have closed off a month of consistent practice and I got lucky I rediscovered an old teacher um, when I was in high school I took a zero hour class which means I got up a few hours ahead of everyone else and caught the bus that drove me around the suburb of O'Fallon Missouri and dropped me at high school for a 6 a.m class and I was getting up and practicing yoga like my mom went to Marshall's one day, got herself a yoga DVD, and I naturally kind of found it. And I also had a a yoga mat that at the time that I used for years. I actually think I lost that on a trip abroad, but I held on to that thing. It was a blue cushy um, Y-Lan yoga um, program that also really similar to Tai Chi um, was a foundational teacher for me. And I think it's funny because I've been practicing yoga digitally for m throughout most of my time practicing. And I find that now with quarantine and classes closed, people are turning to this format as a way to share and contribute. And I just want to say thank you to every single yoga teacher. There have been like two, but <laughs> Selena, Mason Pierre, um, one of my friends from Pietro, the days that I was waitressing there, um, she is a, in a she's an instructor with Sky Ting Yoga and um she's been offering courses on Zoom. If she's interested, I'll link to her in these notes. And um a friend's teacher was also really helpful. She had a Zoom class. Her name is Fiona Davy, I believe. And I'm back to practicing with Shiva Ray because I realized that um Sometimes it's harder to practice the way that I'm ready to practice with certain teachers who are kind of accommodating all levels, which is wonderful and beautiful. But for me, I've started doing this thing with yoga to where it's like, I don't want to hear instruction because sometimes it was inhibiting me with uh, the yoga with Adrian practice. With Shiva Ray, she actually teaches in a way that forces you to turn away from like the, the TV, the camera. Um, and she does the same and it's really beautiful. It's very s cyclical and I feel like it's helping me a lot because it gives me that sense of like dexterity, flexibility and fluid movement. Um, fluid movement is something that I try to apply <laughs> across the fields, whether it's painting, um, you know, speaking to people, jobs, I've worked a lot of different jobs, moving, I've moved a lot. Um, fluid movement is something that I've kind of yearned for again, and it's found its way back to me. I have done Shiva Ray's um, YouTube videos that are free, but she also has a website where she's selling courses, um, which maybe I'll watch those down the line once I've kind of gotten consistent and reward myself, treat myself to like her yoga in Greece, which is a three hour yoga matrix. So good. And that's what I grew up practicing was like a selection of videos so I could change up my flow from day to day. I could choose what I wanted to give my body. 
And in that way, it's kind of like the body develops its own rhythm and like, you know, it'll tell me, oh, I need more love over here in the shoulder. And I notice like at night, if I sleep a certain way, it's all connected. So it brings me to a point. Everything in our lives is connected. And the way that you do one thing, I believe, and I've seen over time applying this theory, is the way that you do everything. Um, even with my pausing from this, you know, scheduled program, it happened as a kind of a result of not getting the um, the look I wanted filming from home because I've kind of uh, teetered off going to my studio. It's just a lot to think about. There's a shared bathroom space. And with COVID-19, any surface can, you know, retain the virus for several hours. And I think that if I were to put myself in a position to where I'm going to my studio and using it, I will have to use the restroom. And there, I don't think there's any way to be cautious enough. Truly, I think that anything that we're fortunate to be able to do, like whether that's staying home and making sure everything is nice and cozy and clean and tidied up, or, um, you know, using a box of gloves in a two weeks period, which is wasteful and scary. And it's like, oh, but what about plastic? Um, I've decided to work from home. It's been a weird choice because it's forcing me to work with acrylic um, and put paper on the walls, but it feels authentic. And as things are evolving, like a lot of the fear is dissipating. I feel that it's just practicality that, and stability that I've seriously been garnering, <laughs> garnering in my own life and ensuring that I have enough stability. So the plants, the classical music, making the bed every morning, getting dressed, these are all things that I've had to learn, like mainly with going to Italy because apparently people think you're depressed if you stay in your pajamas all day, which makes sense. Like clearly, you know, you th if you think, oh, I have things to do, I have people to see, you're going to doll up and get dressed. It's, I think it's kind of this practice of like, I need to be impressive to others. And Italians are very proud people. I love my Italian friends. I've learned so much in my trips abroad to Italy. I was looking through some pictures yesterday, just like two years ago, I was at St. Peter's in November. And like, it seems that November is a, uh, at the beginning of Sagittarius season. I usually wander off <laughs> and find my way. And that's been a thing that came up for me. I was kind of listening to an astrologer and reflecting on her message uh jay from aquarian insight who is on subscribe star awesome service she is just doing she's showing me the way as far as my saturn return is going um i have saturn in aquarius zero degrees and that's her son and she definitely reflects down to me like okay I've just made 20 videos <laughs> like i'm doing my part and i'm living my mission it's possible and that's really helpful but it's also scary because I'm just like ah <laughs> balancing you know the attention I give to like my screens and reading and allowing myself to be passive taking in information all necessary aspects of my journey um but I need to you know as I have more time on my hands that's justified because if you didn't know I left a job at the end of December um, just kind of have been creating and for working through a lot of my, you know, own mental games and traps for myself. Um, I've just wanted to do more. So painting and music making and DJing and cleaning, cooking, these are all things that are natural in life. And I'm finding m that fluidity in my movement being able to say, okay, I'm going to do yoga today. I'm just going to do it. One hour passes by and I'm still flowing with it. It's like, okay, what else needs to get done? Um, I know that time is kind of shifting in our own perception of it. We have far more time on our hands to, you know, hang out, catch up on sleep, um, take care of ourselves. But I know that a lot of people have struggled because of a sense of loneliness, which if anyone knows loneliness, I certainly do. In my travels, I've been at them alone. And I just have this tendency to want to like wander without direction and find my teachers along the way. But part of that journeying 
comes at a cost of like, at least for me, like not feeling like I fit in because I just circulate, circulate, circulate. The Italians that I know, they're all in Italy. And these people who've had major impressions on my life, you know, I don't know when I'll see them next. That's just, you know, how it how it is right now. And it's hard because I really enjoy travel as a means to explore my inner world. So now that I'm in one place, safe, and able to take care of myself, it also allows for me to like sit with things, but really sit with them. You know, the discomfort in my emotional um, rationality, I guess the balance of those two things because emotion is just... It's it's like its own little garden, you know? Things spring up. And sometimes what springs up is really not desired. Not wanted. You know, no need for that now. I'm happy kind of thing. Like I had a friend, my good friend Joy, reach out to me and let me know that she had pictures that I had you like taken on her camera that she lent to me when I went on a trip. And I had to ask her because, you know, trigger warning, I was with someone at the time who was abusive towards me. And I just had to ask, please don't send any images of this this character in my story. Um, and she hasn't sent the photo, so I'm assuming that there were a lot of those. And I think that dealing with trauma is coming up for people now. Um, reconnecting with loved ones is coming up for people now. So there is so much sensitivity, like all the things that we're normally able to do away with because they're too much too uncomfortable um they were they asked too much of us to be honest with ourselves as these things are coming out it's it's up to us to decide how to handle them you know discomfort with finances came up for me and I've been rewarded I feel like I was truly blessed um New York Crit Club is something that I joined mid-semester of 2020 I can't remember the first um meeting but I know that I think I might have presented at the first meeting <laughs> now that I'm like thinking back on it the first one that I attended um this artist Gabriella Gill she lives in Union Square and her apartment was awesome and I was able to show my work to this group of strangers and I chose my Kentucky Derby series because I wasn't really satisfied with them and I wanted feedback on the works so getting that feedback was cool but I think that with my second presentation, everyone saw the true range of my ability and they were blown away. They were like, what the actual F? Like, we kind of thought you were good, but you are phenomenal. And I was like, thanks, guys. <laughs> and on top of that, I just realized that I want more of that, not just the compliments, but the sense of feeling comfortable and free. And it's funny enough, I was looking through my Google Docs, looking for um, art dimensions, and I found... Um, that on the 18th of February, I'd done this ritual with the peace dealer, just asking for what I wanted. And I was asking at the time for community because being unemployed and without anyone to speak to during the day was very lonely. Um, you know, I also was being a little bit secluded because I was, you know, I've been creating art, I've been painting and in a relationship and happy, but I've been working on boundaries, like in all relationships. So I'm not really doing the the whole thing of like, oops, I just lost myself again, which I've done before plenty of times. Um, and losing myself, I define as um, whenever I neglect my own needs. And one of the easiest ways <laughs> for me to tell that I was neglecting my own needs is like being hungry and needing to use the bathroom. These are things that, like, when we're infants, we can cry and someone will rush to us and take care of us. I'm prayerful that everyone's had this experience. And in doing so, these people who nurture us allow for us to kind of reach that state of, like, oh, I'm cared for, I'm loved, I'm desired, people want me around. I know that plenty of, you know, individuals who I've matched with at times, and I use that as a metaphor because I believe that the people who come into our lives are here to teach us you know I was having a conversation and like kind of I think that destiny might be one of those things where you know it but at the same time just putting a simple appreciation to any relationship that appears 
is also honoring that sense of destiny, like fated encounters. <clears throat> Sorry. One thing that I know is that the people who have been fated and who I've encountered who either hurt my feelings and forced me to love myself or showed me what authenticity was and accountability was and made me make sense of that for myself. And I do not believe that there's a single one size fits all. And I've had to learn to also take a step back and be like, oh, okay, I'm sorry I was disrespectful towards this and you, but... I can honor myself and, you know, reflect because there are times whenever I, you know, can get fussy and I need to nurture myself and I take that out on other people. And I think that that's my Aries rising. Like, first and foremost, I am a child at heart. So there are certain things that I kind of look for unconsciously in relationships if I'm not giving them to myself. And I think that a part of happiness is accepting people as they are, accepting yourself as whoever self is, whether it's, you know, you're listening to this or you can put yourself in, you know, your, someone's shoes who's close to you. But being able to hold that outside view for me has been very important to understand the difference between my emotional response and my thought process. What was I expecting out of this? Um, who am I speaking with about what I'm going through right now? And I know that even with my last job, it was such a disappointment because I, I kind of set myself up for it. I was not um, aware of how much my job was taking an effect on me because I was able to justify everything. Um, I was able to want to be competitive with people. And it's so funny. When I was in Tbilisi, I pulled a, I pulled a spread and I got the death card for December of 2019, which was very true. I <laughs> since haven't done one of those annual spreads, but I think it was on Jay's page, Aquarian Insight, where I did a spread for the year. Um, and even in like closing doors, closing out certain chapters of my life, it's allowed for me to as make an assessment of value judgment and say, this was awesome. I look forward to the next time that I experience this or so long. Thank you very much, but I, I think that I can. I'll I'll take it elsewhere from here. Um, yeah, but even in you know quarantine loneliness, wanting a romantic partner, I feel very secure and happy with who I am. So I think that the people around me are reflecting that, and I know that for people, you know, whether it's coming up that oh snap, like I don't like this person anymore. Or, oh, snap, I'm single again. Like, I know that it might sound like I might be coming at it from an outsider's point of view. But in my own reflections, I've been that person and allowed it after feeling, like, super jaded, super jilted. Um, and now I think I've also been able to kind of reap the reward of having loved myself when I was alone. Um, whether that's getting a candle and looking on whatever dating app I was at on at the time or finding a nice book to read and being, you know, cuddly in my room, just swaddled in blankets kind of thing. Um, I know that each part of the page of your own book is what you narrate. And seeing that a year ago, like two days ago, sorry, two years ago, two days ago, I was able to look through Instagram and see like what I'd posted throughout time. So like one of the memories was from last year was like a candle surrounded by rose petals that I'd bought for myself. And I was like romancing myself. <laughs> and then before that, I was at um, St. Peter's Basilica in Rome and it was perfect. I was just like, whoa, I took myself on trips, even if it was just like, all winged, eyes closed, like walking around with suitcases, staying at friends' house, crashing. That's going to be a memory that I'll have with me forever because I did it for myself. And I know that right now I'm so grateful just for all of these moments, all of these separate um, instances of memory where I can reflect and say, oh, yeah, I was growing so much because of this horrible situa situation or because of my absolute loneliness and miserable, you know, outlook on life. And I 
I know that the only way to keep my spirits up is to be present. And that's one thing that Chris Wateki was talking about is that like we're forced right now to be present. Even if we're on our phones all day, we're still dealing with moment to moment. <sighs> and I'm grateful. So I don't know what you know, my no art school episodes will look like from here. I'm very excited because um, this summer I've been awarded scholarship for New York Crit Club. Um, I will be attending a lecture um, on art history where I'm going to be prompted to write more about art and the artists that we're studying, contemporary artists who will be studying with Catherine Haggerty. Um, this past semester of Crit Club was awesome. Like, not only did I find a group of artists whose work has inspired me, but I've been able to jump in and um, contribute, uh, aid in the sales of two works. I sold two works in my time. Um, we didn't get any of the profit, um, the flat file project, but this project just allowed for all artists who were in Crit Club to <clears throat> share their works for sale under $500. And even though... You know, there's a lot more to learn about working with social media from my experience because I'm I'm a natural poster. I'll post when I want to post. I've kind of scaled it back a little bit with certain things and seen like, oh, I really don't share a lot of my artwork as much as I thought I did because I might take a million pictures of something and let it sit over months and then realize two years later, oh, I have not even posted this to inst like social media to sell it. But I'm getting a little bit more bold and brave with each work of art that I make. So I'm about to do a second segment um, because I feel like it really helps to get things in perspective. Um, I'm going to astro.com for the day's chart and I'm just gonna do an intuitive read real fast. The sun is at two degrees Taurus. Um, the moon and Mercury are in Aries. Chiron's in Aries too, but the moon and Mercury. So. With this current transit, I think it's important to get a sense of what we share with people and understand what our role is in our sharing, whether that be in your workplace, in your home place, in your mental place. Um, what physical objects do you share with people and what of that is your responsibility so whether that's an act of contribution of drawing a line making boundaries how can you navigate this current day um with venus and gemini um i'm really excited we're about to get a, a gemini <laughs> venus and gemini retrograde in the coming months so whatever is coming up now like our communication gemini is ruled by the planet mercury which is the um, messenger in Greek mythology. Um, we are learning about that in the planet of Venus, which is like the finer things in life, um, which makes sense. We're at home now. So we're learning more, communicating more about what we have and what we love, the physical objects we behold in our day-to-day -day life. Mars is in Aquarius and Saturn is in Aquarius. Ooh, so I don't know what that means. Saturn's at one degree, Mars is at 15. So we get kind of this like big view and then we get an immediate view because it's Saturn and Mars. Um, big view and medium view to what we have and what our responsibility is authentically to those things. Uranus is in Taurus at six degrees, so hmm. Family units might get some innovation at this time. Dynamics of what we consider family might change up a little bit. Neptune is at 19 degrees Pisces. Mm, so we are at the later stages of our spiritual transit with Neptune and its natural ruler. Hmm, what do you believe? What's coming up for you and your beliefs? I know that I am running a 21 Days of Abundance program, and that's really cool because someone texted it to me, and I really don't like these like text chains that mean nothing. But to me, it's almost like I've gone through this, and like the first two days, my money tree started sprouting again. Yesterday, I got great plant advice, and I'm that's why I'm playing the classical music for my plants. But also to just like do the Dr. Emoto move and lovingly charge the water before you water plants so i'm working on my home life and 
spirituality in the same sort of package you know how can i make my place beautiful um what can i contribute to my own space to make it look and feel like a place i would like to call my studio my home my bedroom my dream life we have the opportunity now to kind of change the way that we live and i don't think that that's going to be cemented for a little bit but each day is kind of like take it one day at a time build your dream moment to moment and let it just roll because whatever you roll will have, you know, it'll have a climax and then it'll, you know, be in motion. So work on that if you're interested. And yeah, I'm going to cut it off there. But <sighs> thanks for sitting with me.